Hi guys, this is Jim from drtankenstein.com. This video is about all-in-one systems or one-pot systems. It's a way of brewing that's becoming increasingly popular recently, and particularly with myself. Uh, I use these things for five gallon batches pretty much every time I brew. So if you're stuck for space at home, you want to free up some space, or you're looking to move from one gallon batches to five gallon, maybe extract to all grain, this is a really good system and I massively recommend it. The, the one I'm using in the video is my personal one. This is the Bulldog Brewer. We're not affiliated with them at all. It's just the one that I happen to have bought and use. There are others available and I'll discuss that at the end. So enjoy. This is the Bulldog Brewer. This is my compact, efficient, five gallon brew system. So it all fits together. Uh, I've dismantled it here so you can see what's in the box, uh, how each component fits together, and most importantly, what each thing does. So I'll start over here. This is the main compartment. This is my mash tun my hot liquor tank, my boil kettle, and my heat source all rolled into one. So it's got these handles, so it's easy to move. It's made of stainless steel, so it's hygienic, it's really easy to clean, and it looks cool. It has this, uh, it's quite a basic computer at the bottom. Uh, other all-in-one systems might be slightly more advanced, but, but this does the job. There's just a couple of buttons which help you regulate the temperature. So like I say, it has a heating element, and a thermometer in it so it'll automatically uh, stick it whatever temperature you set it to. Uh, this also has a timer involved so you can set your mash times or your, your hop intervals or whatever you want to time. Uh, this will do the job. If you look at the front here it also has this, uh, this quite this nice uh, ball valve tap on the front which you know it can serve to remove the wort once you've once you've brewed um, it also helps to regulate the brew like I'll, I'll, I'll explain that more in a second the final part of the main compartment is this now some of you might be familiar with these things this is called a bazooka filter so it's probably 50% of you probably go oh cool a bazooka filter the other 50% of you are just switched off because like I never use this thing. It's really well made. It screws on nicely to the inside of the com uh, main compartment here, but it's honestly, it's, it's too good. It really, it really plugs up the tap at the front there. So when you want to get your beer out, you really have to put in some elbow grease to clean this thing. So I never use it. <laughs> Moving over here then, this is the grain basket. This is, where you put your grain. So this fits inside the main compartment. It's got these legs on the bottom, which stop it from actually coming into contact with the heating element, uh, which helps to regulate the temperature and stop it from exploding. It's got quite a, well, it's got a decent mesh on the bottom. It's not the best, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's supposed to be used in conjunction with the bazooka, but as you know by now, they're evil, so I don't use them. It has these little hooks on the side, which, rest on the lip of the main compartment. Now this was a real selling point for me when I bought this system. It basically means that you can lauter on your own. Um, it goes, you can lift it halfway off and then finish the job. It, it's just quite a, quite a nice addition. You know, it, it just makes, it makes removing the grain from the wort a hell of a lot easier. The grain basket also has this uh, tube in the middle, which you may have seen. I'm not going to take it out again, but the tube helps you fit this. This is the sparge plate. Uh, this may look like the least exciting bit of the kit, but it actually is actually really good. Uh, the guy who sold this to me went on and on and on about this, but it took me actually using it to see the beauty of it. What this does is it allows you to, when sparging, just if you want to dump a load of water in it and see these little bumps here 
they actually have little holes underneath which allow the water to spread out a little bit and stop it from impacting the grain bed. Bucket's on top there. The final, the real final bit of the, of the kit is, in my opinion, the heart of the all-in-one system. This is the pump. Now, it's a fairly basic pump. You know, other systems are gonna have more advanced pumps, more powerful pumps, uh, but it really does the job. If I didn't have a system like this, I would still buy a pump. Basically, this fits on the tap at the front there, and it comes with all the tubing you need to remove work from the bottom and replace it up at the top. Now, if you can just imagine what that means, that helps the temperature regulate. It also helps to filter the beer, which is, I think, why that rubbish mesh, if we're being honest, on the bottom of the grain basket works so well is because above it, you've basically got, I don't know, six inches of filter material. So this thing is the real heart of the system. If you don't want one of these, get yourself a pump anyway. One final cool thing that came with the Bulldog is this. So this is an immersion chiller. At the end of your brew, you just stick this thing in, run some cold water through it, and it helps cool your beer down pretty quickly. I never would have bought one of these if I didn't get it free with the Bulldog, but I'm really glad I've got one now. It's really, really useful. Uh, so that's basically everything that comes in the box. There are a couple of extra things uh, you're gonna need. One is a screwdriver. Uh, everything's connected by sort of Jubilee clips, so it helps to just be able to tighten those up properly. You don't want hot beer shooting everywhere, believe me. Another thing is if you can't connect your chiller to your tap, you might need one of these. I certainly did. And the final thing, this is probably the favorite th thing that I own at the moment, is a massive wooden spoon. So this is, uh, makes you feel, makes you feel like a man. So this helps you to break up any dough balls that form at the bottom. The first time I used this, I had a real issue with just cakes of, of, uh, of grain at the bottom of the grain basket there. So if I use this bad boy, I can really just get in there and break those things up. It really helps. Right, so that's the Bulldog. Let's get some water in there, get brewed. So one of the things I love about this system is that I've just heated 20 liters of water to strike 10 in 23 minutes. So when you think about that compared to a one gallon batch on a conventional stovetop, there's not that big of a time difference. And I think the reason for that is partially due to the fact that you've got the hot plate directly connected to the, the tank. But also I've got uh, the magical pump connected now as well. So the water's being recirculated throughout. The lid's got this cool little hole in it. So the pump just fits right into that. And it's just constantly dragging water past the heat source, past the thermometer over and over again. So the Bulldog knows exactly what's going on, exactly what temperature the water's at. The reason I've got 20 liters in there, that might seem like a lot, um, it's, because, uh, it's because of the dead volume at the bottom of the kettle. So there's, like I mentioned earlier, the grain basket has these little legs on it to prevent explosions. And when, when you've got a compact grain bed, you need to ensure that there's constantly water moving through. So there needs to be enough water in there to support that. All right, we're at temp. I've got the beast. Let's mash in. All doughed in. So this is where I stick the sparge plate on. Like I said earlier, the sparge plate helps you sparge, as the name suggests. 
but it also stops water from channeling as you recirculate the wort, which helps the grain bed to stay intact on the top so you don't just get big holes plowed into the grain. Right? Pump on, grain in. Now we wait. We're all mashed, we're all mashed out. This is at 80 degrees now. Another great mash. You know, it, it just, it does all the work for you. It regulates the temperature, keeps it moving. You don't need to bother coming back, stirring every five minutes to check that, you know, the temperature's still there. It's done. So I'm gonna, I've turned the pump off now. I'm just gonna take it out of this little house and put it on the handle. If I take the lid off. So if you remember, the sparge plate is on now. So I have 20 liters of water in it, which is quite a lot, but it's not, it's not quite enough for it to be a no sparge brew. So I do still need to put a little bit of sparge water in there. The disadvantage of this system is you obviously can't heat two lots of water at the same time because it's an all in one. So luckily I've got this pan. To be honest, if you didn't want to do that, you could maybe mash at a slightly higher volume and hope that you recover enough. You could just heat some water in a kettle and dilute to temperature. That, that's up to you. Um, I'm going to do it this way. Um, but the real beauty of this step is, as I mentioned earlier, the little notches that the grain basket has on it. So obviously this weighs quite a lot now. It's, you know, there's about eight kilograms of grain in there. Uh, with you know grain with water uh, so this is quite heavy and you're kind of you're kind of pulling against the the weight of the water as well so if you if you want you can go halfway if not just just go the full way pull the thing out and that's it it's it's water in now no need for any extra sieves colanders brew bags or, or anything like that it, it's you know it's working the great thing about watering into your boil kettle is that you can start to boil at the same time as the wort is running off the grain so i'm going to do that So that's boiling that, get ready to boil. So I'm just gonna add my sparge water and wait for it to get to 10. 17 minutes on since we started it off to boil and it is rolling. We've got a lovely hot break forming. Uh, that'll subside in a second. And then, yeah, just, just add your hops whenever you want to. I've taken, the, I've taken the pump off now. I prefer to stir it at this point. The pump's probably fine, but I just don't know how heat sensitive it is. I'd rather not take the risk. So this is rolling. When it's finished boiling, put the chiller in, sterilize it for a few minutes in the hot wort, turn the tap on and it'll cool down in about half an hour, maybe even less. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it interesting. Like I say, there are other brands available than the one I used in the video. Uh, the, the, the Grain Father, for example, seems to be the big flagship brand that everybody knows. But depending on where you are in the world, there's probably sort of a, a more local uh, budget brand close to you that you should check out. Now, I have seen a couple of comments surrounding these things online suggesting that maybe these one pot systems, these all in one systems, are a bit expensive or a bit pricey. Now, personally, I have to disagree that, you know, that's up to you. you know, perhaps you could cobble together a three pot system or something similar for a bit less money. But personally, I like these things because they're compact and they're exact. They take up exactly the same amount of space as you see them occupy in the video. And I get good beer out of this every single time I use it with no worries. So if you're interested in an all-in-one system, in a one-pot system, then just head down to your local homebrew shop and ask about it. A lot of places are stocking these now, and if this isn't something that you think your local shop will stock, I've included a couple of links below that you might want to check out, including some of the other stuff I use in the video, like the massive wooden spoon. 
So thanks for watching. As always, join us on drtankenstein.com for weekly new content. Subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter at drtankenstein. Thanks.